Hi guys, Luton here, back for some more Armour 3, and today I'm going to be showing you a very basic beginner's guide to CAS piloting. Now, I have obviously shown some CAS piloting in the past with the buzzard, we've had the wipeout look at as well, and this is the A164 wipeout right here, but what I really thought would be a good thing to show people is a step-by-step -step guide on how to get the plane into the air, because the helicopters is very simple, you just turn it on and start it off, you're good to go it's a little bit different with the jets. And I think a lot of people struggle, they don't even want to go near it, they don't even know what there is to do. There's no real guide to it. So I thought it'd be a good idea to just grab this and show you guys what to do. I'm starting off with where it can generally be located on the Altis server, although this varies from game to game, server to server, depending on what people are playing. Uh, and obviously I'm coming from an Invade and Annex standpoint. Now again, depending on the server, some people may have this available just as support, or it may be a reward that you actually have to earn in the game. Uh, this is all the more reason why it's important to understand actually how you can fly it as well because if it's a reward you don't want to just instantly crash it and throw it away. So first of all you're going to go up to the plane itself and you're going to click on this icon with your scroll wheel that's going to get you into the plane. Now before we initiate anything else we obviously need to understand what some of the controls are, some of the key bindings are. Now you can set these up however you want to. I'm only going to show you how I have it set up. So basically going here to controls and then you're going to go down to plane movement and this will show you all of the controls that you have going on here. So basically what I have done is I've adjusted only a few small things. Uh, basically the nose up, what I've done is add in a mouse button there. That enables me to pull the nose up just using a mouse button and I would recommend that you do add that if you have extra mouse buttons available. Uh, all the rest remain pretty much the same, bank left and right on A and D, fast forward E, increase thrust Q, decrease with Z. Uh, my pedals are set on X and C, I just like to have them right there. Uh, everything else is fairly the same, your gear up and down is Control and G, flaps up down, right Control K and L, and again that's all there is to it really. Uh, obviously there's other bits and pieces we'll talk about as well. So to begin with, once we're in this position right here, we're in the cockpit, okay, and we're going to start things off with Q, and that will bring the engine online. You can hear it starting up. Okay, so we're good to go, start the engine up. Now what we're going to do is accelerate, okay, a little. So you hold down Q to get some thrust. You can hear it coming in, and watch the speedometer up on the top left. It takes a moment for it to kick in. I'm holding down Q, getting ready. And here we go. Now basically you're only going to want to go up to roughly around a max of between 50 to 55 kilometers an hour. Any faster than that you're not going to be able to accurately turn. Now what I'm using here is X and C, okay, I'm using basically the pedals you can see on the back here look, okay, to turn the plane. Because that's what's going to work. So you don't really need to touch your mouse at all at this point, okay. And we're just getting a bit more boost. You can see I'm going about 45, 50 kilometers an hour right here. And we're just going to taxi round to the main runway. There's the airbase over there. So as we come up on here, we want to decrease the thrust a little. And then we're just going to pan around. Now, normally you can just start off accelerating straight away. But we're just going to pull around and stop. There we go. Now we're nicely lined up, ready to go. Now obviously on the top left you can see it starts to, once the engine's online it'll continue to try and accelerate so I'm just holding down Z there to make sure we're holding in place. As soon as I let go of Z though, it's, it's wanting to pull away all the time, basically when we're going. Uh, as I say, you've got all your controls down here that you can look at, but obviously we know these on the top right and left with the uh, UI. Uh, you can zoom in here as well, you can see your Gatlin cannon selected, this is your pitch, roll, speed, gear, uh, you've got your altitude and so on and so on. Uh, obviously up to the top as well, important to note those compass points right there so we can see that this is going to be uh, off to the north I believe, if I can let go, yeah, but anyway basically important to know so north, uh, west, east and so on and so on so you can designate points around the compass for people on the ground and give them bearings as well. Uh, anyway we're ready to go, so basically when we're ready to go at this point we're going to want to check flaps are up, which they are, otherwise it would say flaps up on here, if it says flaps down that's giving you the option to put flaps down, so they want to be up. So flaps are currently up. Uh, gear is obviously down right now, we'll remove that when we get into the air. So we're just going to start off and hold down thrust on Q. 
So off we go, thrust is down on Q and we're good to go. So basically we're going to keep building speed up along here. Here we go. And keep increasing speed, increasing speed until we hit about 200 kilometers an hour or thereabouts. So we're getting up there now, 190, and then we can just lift up a little. And all I do there is just touch the mouse button for nose up ever so slightly. And you can see we're rising up. Now, the wipeout weirdly has this tendency to dip down, so you're kind of constantly fighting against it. You can obviously use your mouse here up and down okay to control so you can always sort of so if I let go of the mouse you'll see what happens see how the plane gradually starts to dip and if I don't touch anything it'll actually start to nosedive so you kind of constantly need to just keep it level okay and again looking here you can obviously see on your readout sort of how level you are. So we can't be actually going up right now. It's going to be level or about here. So we are we're in the air, but we've got a few things left to do. We've still got our gear down, so we're going to raise that up. Okay, and you can do that using the scroll wheel here. You can just go gear up, or you can do the better one, control G. And that will raise our gear. Now we're ready to operate. And that's essentially all there is to it, to getting it in the air. Now once you're in the air of course, you're going to want to be able to manoeuvre around. And again you can use your X and C, now you can see if I'm controlling these at the back here, this will make a turn for us. A very very gentle turn, but a turn nonetheless. Now again, very much like with the helicopters, you can get used to practicing, okay? So you can just practice, 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 okay? You can get used to doing things like turning and then pulling around. Very straightforward to do that nothing difficult at all. So all we do there, okay, is we're literally just going to turn the wings using the mouse or the A and D, so roll like this. Okay, you're going to go to a half roll and then you're just going to use the nose up on the mouse to pull yourself around there. So again, what you're going to do is you want to keep up enough speed as well because when you do these hard banks you'll drop a lot of speed. You're just going to do a half roll to there, like so, and then you're just going to pull around. You can even move your mouse around as well if you want to do it that way, so you can push up, you see. You just push up, push up, push up. And again, if you want to get a harder turn whilst you're doing that, you can often hold down C as well, give you a little bit of extra boost, so if you want to do like a really hard turn. Now the other thing is, of course, is a loop. Now a loop can come in handy. Let's say, for example, that there is an enemy target right here on the end of this peninsula, okay? I think there's a little shack right there I can see. So let's say that this little rock, I think it's a rock actually, but let's say that that rock right there is our target. We're coming in to hit, 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 hit. But we've got a few hits on there. We didn't finish off completely. We're going to want to come back around on that target. So all we're going to do at this point, we're just going to go into a, a loop. We're just going to get some good speed, good speed. We're just going to go straight up. And all I'm doing right there is just holding nose up. Okay. And as we come back around, we're just going to do a full roll back around find our target which is right here and light it up okay it's going to do some damage right and then off we go fly past now another tip that I would suggest is actually when you're in these jets to adjust the sensitivity of your Y uh, axis on the mouse and I will do this by going here, configure, in game of course you'd still be live, that's important to remember, if you're actually in a game it won't pause like this, it'll go live, I'm in the editor right now. I'm going to go back to the controls, we're going to go to mouse, and you can see that my Y axis is turned down to about 50%. Now as an infantry, that's not unbearable, but it does make a difference, but the difference with the jets is significant. If I put it back up again, I'm going to come back around again. Now, it does make a difference in terms of what you can do right here, but that doesn't really matter because when you've got it bound already on the mouse, you don't really need to have that sort of speed. But what does make a difference, and th I'm not the only person, there's other pilots I spoke to were commenting about this, look how much, even just small movement there is. So if you're trying to hit a precise target on the ground, 
see how much give there is zoomed in because obviously it's amplified up over range so look you're, you're trying to hit like a specific target it's not impossible but it's very tricky because that up and down is bouncing a hell of a lot so what we found was a better thing to do was to go into configure controls mouse and then turn your sensitivity down by at least half if not more okay and then when you're not piloting you can just change it back up again providing you remember to do so <laughs> but it just makes it so much easier when you're coming on targets like right here you know there's still a lot of giving it but just not so much it's easier to hold it on the mouse there and that's one thing that I have found makes a big big difference so we're going to do one last thing and then we're going to come back in for a landing now something else that I found is very very important to do when you're in the cast because cast is not all about destroying targets on the ground now obviously you'll note I haven't focused really at all on the attacking aspect of the plane uh, that is something I'll cover in another video because there's a few more things to talk about specifically I really wanted to talk about just getting into the air flying around a little bit and then landing that's the key issues for this video now something else that's important to do that I've found is searching for targets okay you're supporting your team on the ground and you want to be helping them assist by searching for targets so let's slow us down a little bit right here say that we have got some enemy units going on around down here you basically want to get used to using your free look because you want to come past and you want to tilt a little bit you want to roll and then you want to turn and zoom and you're looking for targets so we're looking for people you need to kind of keep in your mind what the aircraft is doing whilst you're searching so you're thinking okay 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 and then you might want to start doing this you might want to start sort of rolling a little turning as you go around here and then keep having another little look you may want to keep turning whilst you're doing it okay it's basically we're sort of turning and maintaining a pattern of operation right here this is just enabling me to continually search for targets now there's going to be times when it's not safe to do this okay and again look you want to come keep checking making sure that you're not losing too much altitude add a little bit of power back on and you can keep searching and basically right here I'd just be looking for infantry, armour, whatever is happening on the ground seeing where my guys are and just searching now again obviously you need to remember when it's safe to do that okay are there any anti-aircraft infantry are there any anti-aircraft vehicles is there anything that's going to fire at you like heavy uh, armor or anything like this okay if so it's probably not safe to do that but when you may be doing that is towards the end of a base okay once it's been mainly cleared out and you're focusing on picking up the straggling people that are left you may need to help assist in directing your team on the ground to where it is that they need to be right now we're, our air base is off over in that direction we can see the runways right there again if we wanted to we can just bring up the map and that's going to show where we are now what I'm going to do is do shift and left click I'm going to put it about here that's going to give me a marker so now I can see the marker five kilometers off there so I'm getting a little bit of speed right here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back around for an approach and uh, you have to really be as straight as possible when you're doing a landing approach because if you leave it too late to compensate for that it's really not going to happen so we can see here kind of looking at where these peninsulas are you can see off that piece of land we're kind of in line so I'm going to pull back around on that piece of land now basically you want to pull it down to about 200 kilometers an hour as you're approaching the runway and then pull it down to about 150 or under when you're coming into land although some people the other day were saying that it doesn't really matter what speed you're going provided you come in straight and uh, you know hit the brakes when you get on the ground So I'm dropping off a bit of speed right here and we're pulling back around now two things to do we're going to want to drop our flaps which will help slow us down I'm also going to want to drop the landing gear so we're lining up right here here we are coming in nice and lined up again we're going to put our gear down control G you can hear it and we're going to put our flaps down like so there we go and the flaps are just those little bits on the back of the wing right there okay so we're nice and lined up we're still going 350 uh, kilometers an hour so I'm going to want to and also you can zoom in here look just estimate your angle a little bit so I'm slowing myself down right now decreasing the thrust and that's Z by the way on the keyboard I'm 
And then we're just coming in for a nice landing right here. Compensating. I'm only using X and C just for the uh, rear control. So I'm just using the mouse to go nice and level. And I'm just using X and C just to compensate. Still going 284, so I'm starting to slow down a lot now. A lot more, a lot more, a lot more. And again, like the guys say, it doesn't, you know, if you can get it down to like, here we are, like 200, 180. Just compensating with the mouse, keeping it nice and steady. Coming in, lift the back, lift the back, lift the back, put it down, and we're on the ground. Nice and easy, nothing much to it at all. And I'm hitting the brakes, hitting the brakes, hitting the brakes. Decrease thrust on Z. And then we don't even need to go to the end of the runway completely. We're going to just pull around right here. Bear in mind that if you're on a server, this is an active runway. If you have multiple cast units operating, you're going to want to stop right here. Check that the runway is clear. You might want to talk to your fellow operators in the air. Make sure nobody is coming in because they could be coming off at distance. You don't want to be on that runway at the same time. And then once we know it's clear, we're going to taxi on round to the rearm repair section which is further down this runway right here. And then so basically often when you're actually in combat etc you're going to need to either refuel, repair or rearm. Okay. And what you would do is make a landing like I just did or you'd come down on this landing itself on this runway and you're going to taxi down to about here. This is where the repair bay uh, just past this section. There's the main airbase. And around about here will be situated your repair, rearm, refuel station. And what will happen is as you come down the runway, you'll just begin to refuel. It'll stop your plane like here, and then you'll start to rearm, refuel. That's all there is to it, guys. It's pretty straightforward, really. I'm going to turn the engine off right now. And I'm going to get out of the plane. So that's all there is, guys, to the beginner course for piloting CAS. Uh, I'll be coming up with another video very soon for uh, military operation, for actual engagements, targets on the ground. I'll be looking at the best way to approach targets, the best weapon selections for targets, and how you can best help your team on the ground. So I hope you've enjoyed this today, guys. If you have, if it's been helpful for you, drop a little like. If you have any requests for other similarly styled videos for different content within Armour, please drop that down below as well. And I'll see you next time for some more Armour 3.